IBESS Biodiversity Conservation Topic 3 Part 1 will explain what we mean when we talk about diversity and this movie will introduce how diversity is measured. There are two significant ideas and they are one, biodiversity can be identified in a variety of forms including species diversity, habitat diversity, and genetic diversity. And the second is the ability to both understand and quantify biodiversity is important to conservation efforts. Here is the outline for the biodiversity conservation movies. Use this slide to find the movie you need for review purposes. This movie is focused right here. Here is the first IB syllabus statement already mentioned in the first slide as it's a part of the significant idea for this unit. Define the terms biodiversity, genetic diversity, species diversity, and habitat diversity. From the Biodiversity Convention of 1992, biodiversity is defined as the variability amongst living organisms from all sources and the ecological complexes of which they are a part. This includes the diversity within a species, between species, and of ecosystems. Here are the definitions of the four different diversity types. This is a slide to study. I've already introduced biodiversity as the variability amongst living organisms from all sources and the ecological complexes of which they are a part. Habitat diversity is the range of different habitats in an ecosystem or biome. Species diversity is the diversity of different species, different species in an ecosystem or biome. And genetic diversity is the range of genetic materials within a population of a single species. Genetic diversity is the range of genetic variation, genetic material within a population of a species. Species diversity is the diversity of different species in an ecosystem or biome. And habitat diversity is the range of different habitats in an ecosystem or biome. In this slide, we can see forests in the distance as altitude changes. We can see grasslands to the right. And we can see two different aquatic habitats a stream in the foreground feeding into a lake. Over great spans of time, the diversity of living things on Earth has increased, even despite five great extinction events. Again, this graph shows the number of different species within families of plants going back hundreds of millions of years. You can see that the diversity of life on Earth has generally increased. So with this IB syllabus statement, here is a question for you. Can you explain why greater habitat diversity leads to greater species and genetic diversity? As a start in my explanation of why greater habitat diversity leads to greater species and genetic diversity, you should remember that diversity increases through successional time and then reaches a plateau as there are a finite number of different species in any location. Diversity increases as the habitat becomes more complex during succession. With climax species, there are more niches that support more different species with varying roles in the ecosystem. A mixture of species from different successional stages will be more diverse than locations that support only early or only late successional species. Climax forests, or forests with both canopy and floor layers, have greater diversity because of the greater number of different niches that support species that have varying roles in the larger ecosystem. And remember, with successional time, the soil changes, supporting many more decomposer species. Now, a new idea, but an idea that should make sense to you. Diversity, seen here on the y-axis, increases when the size of the habitat increases. This graph displays the relationship of island size and diversity among islands of the Caribbean. You can see that as islands increase in size, say Montserrat to Jamaica to Cuba, the number of different species increases. When there's greater area, there is a higher probability for different habitats, water, land, wet, dry, thus, a greater likelihood of different niches available for different species.
locations with mixtures of habitats, as can be seen in this slide, wet and dry, early succession and late succession, will be more diverse because of the more varied niches available for species to fill. This increases local diversity. A region with changes in altitude have increased diversity. The changes in altitude increase the variety of habitats from semi-tropical at the base to alpine at the summit. These varying habitats have greater number of niches that support greater diversity. Changes in temperature and rainfall due to the changes in altitude result in dramatically different habitats over short distances. The varying climates support different kinds of species, thus increasing local diversity. Even when the landscape is manipulated by people, diversity can be increased if a diversity of species are planted, including late successional species, you can see here, and early successional species here. This type of agriculture, seen in this slide, would be known as polyculture. This graph shows the diversity of mammals on the various continents as a function of their area. You can see that as the area of the continent increases, so does the diversity of mammals. Larger areas are more likely to support different types of habitats, from wet to dry, from river to land, from low altitude to high altitude. The interesting part of this graph is the extrapolation to a projected number if all the continents were combined into a single landmass. In other words, this is the projected diversity of mammals if one were to do nothing more than simply combine landmasses into one. But if you sum diversity on each of the continents, the actual value is here. Why? Why would diversity be higher if the continents are separated, isolated? The answer lies in the importance of genetic isolation that con comes with the separation of the continents and the impact that the continental separation has on diversity. When populations become genetically isolated from one another, as they have over time when continents have drifted apart, the formation of new species increases. That's what we're seeing here. And I'll strengthen this concept in the next movie, Biodiversity Conservation Part 2. So here is an IB syllabus statement that digs into diversity as a concept and as a quantifiable ecological measure. State that species diversity in a community is a product of two variables, the number of different species, known as species richness, and their relative proportions, known as species evenness. Examine the upper image and the lower image carefully. Consider which community is more diverse and why. So which of these two communities, the upper or the lower, is more diverse? Explain your thinking with reference to the number of different species, species richness. I hope you can see that the upper image has four different species, while the lower image has only three. Thus, the upper location would be considered more diverse. It would have a higher species richness. Easy, right? Well, keep your eyes open as I move to the next slide. Once again, examine the upper and lower images carefully. Consider which one is more diverse and why. Explain your thinking with reference to the number of different species, which is richness, and the relative proportions of those species, called evenness. You should notice that both locations have four species. So based on species richness, number, alone, they would have the same diversity but we must consider evenness as well. The top location would have greater diversity because there is more evenness among the four species. What do I mean by evenness? I mean that the four species are more equally represented. The relative abundance of each of the four species is more even, more proportional. The community in the lower image is dominated by just one of the four species. So when we quantify diversity, diversity is dependent on the number of different species, this is species richness, and the relative proportions of each of the species, this is known as evenness. The Simpsons Diversity Index will be studied in class. The formula is given here when species abundance data is collected as percent frequency data. The index takes into account both number of different species, richness, 
and their relative abundance, evenness. The Simpsons diversity index can be used when numbers of individuals are counted for each existing species. Once again, the formula takes into account both the number of different species, richness, as well as relative abundance, evenness. In this table, you can see four locations and five possible species, and we have calculated diversity values using Simpson's index for each location. With the data, we can begin to explain diversity values on the basis of the number of different species, richness, and relative abundance, evenness. Let's dive in. The diversity index for location 1 is 4, and this is lower than location 2, which is given as 5, because location 1 only has 4 species, while location 2 has 5 species. The relative abundance of the species in each location is proportional or evenly distributed, thus location 2 has a higher diversity because of 5 species relative to location 1, which only has 4 species. Now, Location 3 has a lower diversity than location 2. Each has five species, but the relative abundance, the evenness of the species in location 3, is not as strong because one species here is seen in relatively small numbers. Now, location 3 is more diverse than location 1 because location 3 has five species, while location 1 only has four species. Lastly, location 4 has a very low diversity index. While location 4 does have five species, one species dominates, with 50% of the habitat represented by species A. The asymmetry of the species abundance drives down the diversity index. So here is an IB syllabus statement about which you already have something to say. Comment on the relative values of biodiversity data. You should be able to comment on relative values of biodiversity based on the number of different species and the relative abundance of the species in the habitat. As well, don't forget what I presented earlier in this movie. Larger areas, climax forests, and large changes in altitude all serve to increase local diversity. Remember, larger areas have greater diversity. Climax forests with canopy, understory, and floor species provide huge numbers of different niches that support an increased biodiversity. Varied habitats, water, land, wet, dry, early succession, late succession, all serve to increase diversity. Altitude change results in varied habitats, from subtropical to alpine. This increases diversity. And that brings us to the next IB syllabus statement. Discuss the usefulness of providing numerical values of diversity to understanding the nature of biological communities and the conservation of biodiversity. Numerical values of diversity are useful in understanding the nature of biological communities so that appropriate conservation can be implemented. Locations identified with high Simpsons Diversity Index values may be targeted for conservation. Communities can be described and compared through the use of diversity indices. Low diversity could be an indication of human impact, such as pollution, deforestation, or recent colonization of the site. Numerical values of diversity are useful in understanding the nature of biological communities so that appropriate conservation can be implemented. But the decisions that humans make about which communities require conservation measures is a more complex topic. So, for example, the desert is not as diverse as a rainforest, but it may have species that require protection. Or humans may decide that the beauty of the desert, the aesthetics, would be a reason for protection. Communities can be described and compared through the use of diversity indices. Low diversity could be an indication of human impact, such as pollution or deforestation, or, as can be seen in this slide, recent colonization of the site. And thus, this IB syllabus statement. When comparing communities that are similar, low diversity could be indicative of human impact, such as pollution, 
deforestation and recent colonization of the site. Pollution harms organisms, thus reducing diversity. By measuring diversity, the impact of pollution could be documented and the site could be targeted for restoration. The negative effects of acid rain can be seen in this image. By measuring diversity, the impact of pollution can be documented. Quantification of biodiversity is important to conservation efforts so that areas of high biodiversity may be identified, explored, and appropriate conservation put into place where possible. Here is the IB syllabus statement. Quantification of biodiversity is important to conservation efforts so that areas of high biodiversity may be identified, explored, and appropriate conservation put into place where possible. The regions in red on this map have been identified as locations in urgent need of protection. By measuring diversity, we can focus the resources of conservation on the locations in greatest need. The 35 plus hot spots in the world are like ecological arcs. They represent just 2% of the Earth's land area, but support 52% of the plant species and 36% of terrestrial vertebrates. The regions in red on this map have been identified as locations in urgent need of protection. By measuring diversity, we can focus the resources of conservation on the locations in greatest need. There are 17 megadiversity countries that hold two-thirds of all species, and the top three would be Brazil, Indonesia, and Colombia. There are 1,100 national parks greater than 10 square kilometers in 120 countries, but only 1% of parks in less economically developed countries receive strong protection. On Earth, scientists have documented approximately 2 million species, but there are estimated to be 30 million, maybe more. Some folks have estimated up to 100 million different species. The diversity on Earth has been generated over long spans of time through the process of natural selection, where there's variation among individuals, there's an overproduction of offspring. There are limited resources setting up a struggle among individuals to gain those resources and those best suited to gain resources in the local environment will survive and reproduce at higher rates than their neighbors. We will look carefully at natural selection in the Biodiversity Conservation Part 2 movie. Stay tuned. And that brings us to the end of IBESS Biodiversity Conservation Part 1.